Dr. Joseph Needham was a prominent biochemist who dedicated most of his life to the history and science of technology in China. He is well known for his great work, the 26th volume Science and Civilization in China series. The exhibition features 11 banners with photos documenting Needham's first encounter with wartime China and his three universities in the Southwest. Let me tell you a little bit about my own uh, encounter with uh, the name Joseph Needham. Uh, you know, I was a, a student of science uh, in a UST in the US. <laughs> it's called Caltech. <laughs> so it's uh, as UST as you can get. Uh, you know, the impression you have in those days is, uh, you know, basically all the modern science is Western. Right? It's, I think the the sort of Asian in general science is sort of we have no long knowledge at all. Uh, I'm well, because uh, for someone coming from uh, China, okay, you know, Hong Kong, you know, those, those ethnic Chinese, we kind of have some vague idea that you know, uh, Chinese invented many things in the old days, you know, gunpowder, compass. If all you have to do is look at that mural that we hand out as a gift, you know, you go to our mural, it has the pictures of all these inventions, and I always tell when I. Our guests, when I hand out that mural, I said, "Look, that list stopped in 13th century A.D. If you look at it, okay, but a lot of things must have happened from 13th century A.D. to now. It's just that we don't know. Uh, uh, in a way, so when I was a student, I always, you know, this series of books that I, I did not read, go through the volume. But I think every student or scientist with any interest in China would know about Joseph Needham." And this volume of books, okay, it's always one of these projects. I said, "You've got. If I have time, you know, I would want to go through those volumes. It's just that it's a huge volume." Uh, I did not know that he was a biochemist. I knew that he was at Cambridge, right? If I remember, so we knew a little bit about him. So I'm particularly curious today. I, uh, I'm gonna go to your talk to uh, find out more. I think, in a way, Needham is a legend, uh, not only because the quality of work that he does. But also, I think the story of how he got into this—I read a little bit of the abstract—is interesting. But also, in a way, uh, all scientists, especially in this part of the world, owe him a little bit, a lot actually, of how he exposed, uh, you know, sort of the, the work that is done here uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, I think this is, especially in this globalized world, uh, he started this some time ago. Okay, so so I think this is—he uh, was be ahead of his time in a way. Can you imagine now with the internet, you know, and everything, he could have done a lot more in a way. Right? This uh, 25 volume will be coming alive on the web, you know, with virtual reality and all that thing going on. Anyway, that's sort of my uh, personal uh, encounter with uh, Joseph Needham. But coming back to actually UST, uh, uh, I always tell the students. In fact, I was a little late because I was interviewed by. Uh, some of the graduates from this class, 2017, they want to interview me to say some encouraging words to the graduates. And I always tell them, uh, when you're in university, you have to go beyond your major, okay? You, after all, you are in the University of Science and Technology. Uh, some of them were business major, for example. I said, oh, you're a business major. You should learn something about technology, science and technology, and vice versa. And uh, so it's knowing some background in the history of science in this part of the world, I think is an important uh, component. Uh, not that you will uh, get a better job or uh, get more salary you know, starting salary. That's not the point. The point is, this is part of our, the knowledge that as a student in a University of Science and Technology in China now. When I look back at my connection to UST, I always think about Pope, Professor Paul Chu. Professor Paul Chu was a director of the foundation until he returned to the University of Houston a number of years ago. And I always look to the successor of Professor Paul Chu. So finally today, I got to meet you are Professor Tony Chen. And I really get excited this morning on the way to the university. But in addition, in addition, I also need to single out Professor Billy So. I met him on a very unusual setting at a seminar at Hong Kong U last year. 
early last year, I think spring 2016. And we were talking about Joseph Linham. And he said, oh, by the way, Peter, one of Joseph's collaborator is now at UST. So I got very excited. I said, who, 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 you know? And then he mentioned Professor Christian Daniel. So I must tell you how excited I was when I heard about the name. Because today in Hong Kong, we may be the only two surviving. <laughs> they got to work with both Dr. Lu Gui Jin and of course Joseph Ninem, our mentor for many years. So as I look forward to our discussion uh, later this afternoon or at 2, 1 p.m., I will share my uh, personal encounter, personal experience in working with both important figures in the science and technology in China. So on this occasion, my thank to, in particular to uh, Dr. Marco, Marco Cabrera, Cabrera, and of course to my friend Al Christian for initiating this exhibition. Because just as we were going to start the exhibition at Hong Kong U, and I turned to uh, Professor Daniel and then he said, let me, let me uh, work on it. And very soon, uh, Marco came into the picture. And of course, with uh, your head librarian, um, Diana, if I may call. So I'm very happy this impromptu uh, exhibition uh, finalized. And so this is a very important day, March 30th, 2017. So without further comment, I want to thank Professor Chen. And I get to know him today. And I hope to do a few more things during the next half an hour or so. Thank you so much again. Thank <laughs> you.